<laughs> our, our viewers, I'm convinced, would like a what? sample. Are you okay to give a sample? Sample what? So I'll be the guy who gives you the cigarette and says, burn him, burn him. And then you <laughs> lean over with the cigarette and do the face. Can we do that? Can we do it? Yeah. And that's that's the cigarette, is it? We've got to improvise. Okay, now this is done. You're putting me up, putting it on me now. It's going to be the best bit. <laughs> right? Okay. Good? We good? Yeah, we're good. All right. <clears throat> I've got to psych myself up. Burn him, Tony. 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 <laughs> 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 now you put a bit too much tobacco in there, Sean. <laughs> Is that a vape? Is that a vape? That's one of your vapes. <laughs> um, oh. But do you know what? Uh, do, doing all, uh, the, you know, the, the Foot Soldier films have obviously got a massive uh, place in my heart. Um, and when I, when people say about change your life, I think what it's done is, it's um, what I love is I love meeting people that I don't know mm. that watch all the films and they've grown up on it. And the amount of people that send me like videos or pictures of people dressed up as Tony Tucker or people that have gone, oh, can you send me a video calling me a and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and you just sort of think, you know, why do you want to video me calling you a why? Why? Do you know what I mean, it's just that was, that was my next request. <laughs> I, well, no, any, anytime, Sean, for you, anything, anything. <laughs> do I'll you, even put the wig on for you. That's that. <laughs> do you ever contemplate what actually? Growing my hair and dyeing it blonde? No. <laughs> do you ever contemplate how those guys actually met the end? Do you know something? Um, what's interesting is you know I've I've I spoke to lots of people. And, and, you know, look, there's loads of people who say uh, Carlton wasn't really close to him. Carlton was really close to him. Uh, you know, uh, Pat Tate was, you know, not really around him all the time. Uh, Bernie was, Bernie wasn't. I mean, you know, there's so many conflicting stories about who was really there, who really did this, who really did that. I think the reality is this, right? Um, everybody, right, wants to embellish their story. Everybody wants to say, oh, I was their best friends. I knew them better than anybody. I was, you know, and and I think whatever happens, even if in a year's time, they say, these are the people that killed them in the Range Rover. You know, I mean, you had uh, Nipparelli say, his dead dad did it, right? And he confessed to it on his deathbed. Um, you've had Jack Williams and Mickey Steele saying that they're innocent throughout, you know, and you sort of think, well, even if you were innocent, right? When you've had all your appeals and you know that you're not going to come out of jail, you might as well just put your hands up. Like you said earlier, when you got offered that deal, if you can have the nine and a half years now, or you can have in 50 years, what do you want? You're going to take nine and a half years, right? So Some people, if they're innocent, they're, they're not going to bow down. They're going to do the time. There exactly. are those people out there. Even though if they can get out the next day, I've seen it. Yeah, but, but, yeah. but, but for, for, for me... I would just think, you know what? I can sit in here for another eight years. Why well, don't just come out? Do you know what? Fuck it, I did it. Let Linda, me out. Linda Calvi, right. she did it. She did the extra time. But but yeah. but but the thing is, um, you know, uh, I've spoken to law enforcement. I've spoken to all sorts of people, and whatever anybody says, there was an issue between Mick Steele and Jack Wombs, um, and you know Pat Tate and Tanya Tucker. There was an issue, and you know. Mickey still was well known for bringing in drugs on his plane. And, you know, the, there is a well known story that they did some sort of deal and it didn't, whatever they sold them wasn't right. And then I don't know if it was Pat or Tony or somebody was going around saying, we're going to kill you, we're going to can on you out if you don't give us the money. So I think essentially when that happened, you know, they're, they're, in, a, they're, in, a, they're in a place where, you know, if you've got the, and they were lunatics, they were running around beating people up. Craig Ralph injected that guy and fucking killed him. I mean, they, they were off key. They weren't, you know, I mean, you know, look. Which means way, a lot of people could potentially the, the way, have done the way it because they pissed off so many people. The way they behaved, right, you know, Nipper Ellis, who said he's dead, he shot Pat Tate, right? He actually shot him, right? So that thing in Rise of the Foot Soldier, the first one, where 
I think it's called Jimmy Gerenuk. I think that was maybe loosely based on what happened. But in real life, Nipper Ellis shot Pat Tate for the window. And he wasn't shooting him to maim him, he was shooting him to kill him, right? So you think that was just somebody who he'd had a disagreement with. So you think how many people they've beaten up, terrorised. It could have been 100 people that would... And, and people probably did want him dead, right? But, but the reality is, um, you know, when you actually look at... The, the police reports and the rest of it, they've said that they've... And bear in mind, now they can actually triangulate your phone to where you're sitting. Back then, it was within a certain radius. So they could say, well, uh, you know, uh, the Essex boys were killed there and Mickey Still and Jack Wham's phones were in the area. But they can't put them at the thing. There was no DNA. Uh, they didn't recover the shotgun. They didn't recover the fucking bullets. Uh, obviously, when when they arrest, when the police arrest anybody, they can actually get, you know, they can do whatever the DNA is, and they know if you've fired a firearm because you'll have the gun powder residue on you. Uh, there'll be fibres, you know. So the fact that there was no DNA doesn't mean they're innocent, right? But it also doesn't mean they're guilty. But the thing is, no DNA. And, you know, they were in the area. When they got arrested, apparently, um, they pretended they didn't know where Rettendon was. But then when they went back to them and said, well, you know, your phone's near Rettendon. And they went, oh, yeah, I was picking up a car. So it was like, you know, and I think the problem is, if you are interviewed by the police and you say something, oh, I don't know where it is. And then you go, oh, well, actually, no, I do know. I was picking up a car. It's like, well, do you know where it is or not, mate? Do you know what I mean? So I, th I think that didn't help them. Um, and look, there, nobody else has been arrested for it. Loads of people have been questioned. Loads of people have been interviewed. There's been loads of suspects. But they are the only people who've actually been accused of it, have been convicted of it and gone to jail for it. So for me, um, you know, I've, I've spoken to uh, uh, John Wombs, and John Wombs has said, you know, his brother's innocent, I didn't do it, and the truth's going to come out, right? So they're obviously campaigning for justice. There was recently a program on Sky where uh, I think there was two. There was one about the Essex boys that had Carlton and Dave Courtney and everybody talking about it. Um, and then I think there was another one which these police guys said, let's try and find out. Let's go through it all again. Let's see if it's right. You know, and they, and they all come up. You know, there was a theory that a professional hitman did it from East London. There was a theory that maybe Nipperellis' dead dad did it. There was all these other theories, but again, they didn't really lead anywhere. So again, that's what makes the Essex boys and, and these stories. I mean, there's been 20 or 30 books, 20 or 30 films, and they're going to keep going because it's like, it's never going to be solved. If you're looking for a gift, my new book, Sit Downs with Gangsters, is available worldwide on Amazon. We've interviewed over a thousand people now, and we selected 10 of the hardest hitting stories to go in this book. Each chapter features the story of one of our podcast guests. Those stories are Shane Taylor, Knife Maniac's Redemption, John Elite, Mafia Hitman for the Gambino Crime Family, Joey Barnett, 35 years in UK prison, Ian Blink McDonald, £6 million bank robber, Chet Sandu, Asian smuggler in Spanish Supermax, John Lawson, the hit team commander, David Macmillan, international smuggler's Thai death row prison escape, John Abbott, San Quentin prison shootout and escape, Michael Francis, Colombo crime family capo portrayed in Goodfellas. And Wildman, English enforcer in Arizona prison. Link in description box on YouTube, available worldwide on Amazon. Also, my next book, Untouchable Jimmy Savile, is getting published in December 2023. So check that out as well. It will be available worldwide on Amazon. Thank you for listening. Cheers.